I've been covering the Consumer Electronics Show for more than a decade. It used to be car alarms and little gadgets and things like speakers. Oh no, it's turned into a huge automotive world. And right now, somebody who's at the forefront of all of that is Mark Fields, the president and CEO of Ford, rolling out, autonomous is sort of the key word here this year, but a fleet of Ford Fusion autonomous vehicles. Tell us about this, because by the way, this is the first time we're ever seeing this in real world life. That's correct. I mean, we've, we've been on the road with an autonomous research vehicle since 2015. This is our latest. This is our new Fusion hybrid autonomous research vehicle. And what it has on it, it has a combination of sensors. Uh, LiDAR systems, which is basically, it emits a lot of uh, millions of uh, pulses of light, and it senses the, it's the eyes of the vehicle. And if you recall, usually they're really big and bulky. This is the latest generation, so it fits more nicely into the design of the vehicle, and it also senses better. Um, and it's gonna be a fleet, correct? Yeah. We're, How uh, many? We have, uh, we'll have 30 on the road this month and we're gonna triple that to more uh, to 90 by the end of this year. And it's all around our development efforts about bringing out a, an autonom a fully autonomous vehicle where the, the, the driver or the passenger doesn't need to take control in 2021. Okay, so you look at these gadgets of it. This is no longer the gigantic whirly bird on the top that looks like a, a nerdy kind of thing. You've got 3D mapping, you've got the sensors. Take a walk around, Ben, and you can see how the car actually looks. Computational horsepower, where is the brain of this? The brain, the vehicle is made up, a lot of the, the, the computers are in the trunk of the vehicle, but right. the vehicle is made up of two parts. The vehicle platform, right? How did the vehicle drive and it goes turns left and right? And then what they call the virtual driver system, which is the brain. It has the sensors, it has the algorithms for path planning on how to get around roads and it has the what they call computer vision and also the machine learning with uh, a vision with 3D maps. And it's that virtual driver system made it to the vehicle platform. I applaud all of this, but we've got a hearing right now going on on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. about hacking. Donald Trump is going to be briefed on the so-called Russian hack. A politician or mm -hmm. the kid of a, a wealthy person is in here, somebody hacks it, it either drives off the road, off a ravine. How do you keep people safe in these things from hacking. We have lots of protocols. Uh, we have lots of what they call firewalls in here. Um, so we are working very, very intently on making sure we have the right protection so these vehicles are safe for our consumers. I was in the Delphi autonomous vehicle. Uh, <laughs> very scary because while I loved it and I thought this is interesting mm -hmm. you just don't know all of the uh, outer lying aspects of driving mm -hmm. and you know cars need to start to learn I suppose so they're going to you guys are making so many headlines on this and yet unfortunately in many regards the focus is on the fact that some people feel you were Twitter shamed by president-elect <laughs> uh, Donald Trump into closing down the plans for the Mexico plant um, what do you say about that what was it that really influenced that as it pertains to him because you said closing it down was actually a vote of confidence in his leadership. One of the factors we look at is the more favorable uh, business environment for manufacturers in the U.S. That's a part of it. That was a vote of confidence in what we think the president can deliver. In terms of the cancellation of the plant in Mexico, that was purely a business decision based on demand. We were going to put our, our, our next generation focus in there. We've seen demand for small cars in the U.S. drop dramatically. So we basically said we don't need that capacity anymore, and we can build that focus in another existing facility in Mexico. Okay. Have you spoken to Donald Trump since you announced the closure of the billion-dollar plant? No. We advised both President-elect Trump and also Vice President-elect uh, Pence on the morning before we made the announcement. And uh, that was the last time we had, uh, we had contact with him. If you talked to him, what would you say to him? I would say, listen, we, we, we are running our business. We're doing the right thing for us. We're also very encouraged by the pro-growth policies that you're talking about around tax and regulatory reform. And we want to do our part to contribute to economic development in our home market, just like we do around the world. Henry Ford, the founder of this company, uh, was a man who completely thought for himself. What would he think of uh, a leader who's getting it out there, whether it's Toyota, that, that President Trump tweeted about, um, or any of the other companies out there. General Motors, he's been very hard on them. What would a guy like Henry Ford say to those kinds of moves? Well, I think Henry Ford, as it relates to our company, 
I think he he would get he would be excited. He'd be elated at how we're moving the company forward in terms of lots of innovation, particularly around autonomous vehicles, which we've been working on for 10 years. I think he would say a big thumbs up, say way to go. Okay, and 13 uh, electric vehicles on the docket is what you believe is right for the business. So correct. You you hope that the the tax incentives for electric cars stays in place? Well, overall, we're looking first at market demand. Our view is over time, the cost of ownership will converge between electrified vehicles and internal combustion engines. So, of course, we want to be ready for that. And it's around taking what people love about our existing products and making them even better. So that's why we announced an F-150 hybrid. When's that coming, the hybrid F-150? Uh, that will be coming over the next four years. We're going to be bringing out the seven electrified vehicles that we talked about earlier this week of the 13. So we have some more to talk about.